Turn off your lights. Make sure your doors and windows are locked. Things are about to get spooky. Someone is watching me by Brilliant Bex 1992. So I've never posted on the sub, though I have other stories I've buried deep until recently, but this is happening in the present. I've had people stalk and follow me before, and because of that and my true crime addiction, I've become supremely paranoid and a solid curtain twitcher. I, 31 female, reside in an upstairs room that was my first room to myself as a child. I had to leave a bad situation and therefore ended up back at my childhood home. For reference, when our house was built, we were told that the field to our left, with horses and a barn at the time, would one day soon be a development. That was 2000 when we were told that. And it wasn't until 2022 that the road started being formed and a foundations laid. I had already had someone follow me home before when I was young, post about it, but I don't know how to link it. But I was in a different bedroom next door. My parents put in a free library that was right below my window, and nighttime security lights that are very bright and turn on if you're within 20 feet of the side of my house my room is on. I'll admit, having an open field next to me so long made me accustomed to not closing my curtains when I change, because there was never anyone to watch. Now there is. For the past two weeks, the burglar lights next to the free library have been going off late at night. Because my one side of the curtain is open so I can use my vape, that's the only reason I noticed it at all. I don't think too much of it at first. We lock all the doors and windows every night, and I'm on the second floor. I also always look out to see if it was a car, someone walking their dog, or a deer, only to see nothing. To add, they put in a shit ton of street lights around this area, so visibility is great. But it just kept happening. So, last night, I did my usual. I saw the lights come on out of my peripherals. I acted natural, giving full view out the window I was going to bed. It was about 3 a.m., turned the TV off, closed the window and curtains, turned the lights out. Then I ducked down, peering through the curtain to the sidewalk below. I honestly thought I was going to pass out when after a few minutes, maybe five, someone comes out from the side of my house, all silhouette dressed in black. They kept their back to me until the light turned off, but I swear I could still see them staying there, looking up like they could see me. I called the police, but while I was on the phone with the operator, I saw him run off. There wasn't much they could do, except say that they have a car drive around and look. My parents are asleep and I know I have to tell them tomorrow. This scares the crap out of me. If it hadn't been happening for weeks and was a sole incident, I would probably be fine about it. But the fact that that light has been going off without me seeing activity and what happened tonight makes me think this person's been watching me and watching my house. The person outside my window, let's please never fucking meet. Small update. I did tell my parents, and at first they brushed me off, claiming I had a couple drinks and it was late, so I probably just saw someone checking out the library. I then had another conversation about this with my dad, who said that there had been reports the last couple of weeks of car break-ins, and says my car is parked on my side of the street right outside my window. Maybe they were trying to break into it? I pointed out that if he was trying to get into my car, why was he pressed up against the house where he wasn't visible from my window? And why did he at no point go towards my car? I think I freaked him out enough that we are going to potentially get a camera for that area. 
given all the development happening around us. I think it's smart even without this incident. Thank you all for your advice and replies. I'll update here again if anything happens. And there is no other updates. I hope you picked a movie that's actually scary this time. My brother scoffs while taking a swig of his beer. Don't worry, this one will definitely get a reaction out of you. I replied before putting on the recording of his girlfriend being kidnapped. What was unseen by Pumpkin Man 35. My family has always been big on Halloween. Our homes are decorated, we walk the streets when we were kids, and host costume parties now that we're older. I've got lots of good memories of the nights with my two older brothers, mother, and friends. But there's one particular story that we still frequently relate on Halloween via family group message nowadays that was not pleasant as others. A downright chilling experience that has forever embedded itself in our collective reflections. October 31st, 1991. I had turned two in June and was already in my own bedroom, which was the designated nursery beforehand. We lived in a suburb of Houston, Texas that is today a curved row of houses, but back then was a densely forest area. There was a large window in my room that looked across to the backyard and into the woods beyond. On this particular Halloween, the moon was in a waning crescent shape and projected just enough light to see by. I had a big plastic cutout jack-o'-lantern hanging by a thumbtack on my wall. Thin traces of splintered moonlight draped onto its big grinning face. An eerie setting indeed for what is still my favorite night of the year. My mom, brothers, and I were all worn out after a lengthy candy excursion that went well after our usual bedtime. My two siblings had their own rooms, and my parents were watching Night of the Living Dead in the living room. I laid beneath the covers, taking in the sounds of the swirling ceiling fan overhead. My drifting eyes looked towards my window. That's when I heard it. A faint scratching, like pawing of a kitten on glass doors. Only, we didn't have a kitten, and there certainly wasn't a glass door in my room. I stirred fully back awake, wondering what that sound was. I listened carefully to the gentleness of the silence, the swirling of the ceiling fan, Barbara's scream from the living room television. A symphony of horns burst to life as she was chased to her car by a horde of undead. Then it came again, a scratching sound like fingernails at the base of my window now. I looked towards the window. Nothing there. Slithers of Halloween moonlight pressing through the treetops and rustling into my bedroom. It came again from something wholly unseen. A ghost? A murderer? This thing my brothers told me about called the Boogeyman? Some other creature from the deep recesses of the forest? Scratching, scratching, trying to break in, trying to eat me, murder me, or zap me to a planet unknown. Scratch, scratch, scratch. The invisible fingers of something that could only be lurking on the other side of my window. Finally, I couldn't restrain myself any longer. I screamed like a two and a half year old has never screamed like before. My mother came charging into my room, bursting the door open like a firefighter. I cried out to her that there was something at my window and it was trying to get in. She heard the scratching sound too. Alarmed, she turned on the light and raced to the window. Nothing. No ghosts, no murderers, no boogeyman. 
not even a lizard or moth, not even a tree limb, but still scratched and scratched. My mom called for my dad, and by this time, my brothers were rushing into our room, too, with pop guns in their hands. My dad stepped inside, hearing the scratching sounds as well. He went to the window beside my mom, but turned about when he, too, saw nothing outside. Yet again, scratch, scratch, scratch. Finally, we saw what it was. Scraping the wall just above my bed, just above my head, the plastic cut out of the grinning jack-o'-lantern. It moved in the wind my ceiling fan, the thumbtack having loosened its grip somehow. My dad took it down and the scratching suddenly ceased. What a fright it was, though, on that Halloween night. My brothers still enjoy poking fun at me about it, although none of us are below the age of 30 anymore. Is it a girl or a boy, my dear? Asked a lady whose hair I had just styled. I'm having a baby boy, I answered excitedly with my back turned, placing my comb back in my hairstyling kit while forgetting that I was a mortuary cosmetologist. Creepy Woman in Empty Business Park by Blondie Cake 7 Many years ago, when my daughter was potty trained, a friend recommended I keep a travel potty with me. It saved me from rushing to find a restroom and avoid stopping in anywhere questionable with a toddler. We would drive about 40 minutes to pick up my husband on his lunch break. That afternoon, we're heading back to drop him off at work, and we're only about a block from the restaurant when my daughter said she had to go. The area we would just head into was a large business park and are a lot of very large buildings to the left and right. I saw one in the parking lot looked empty. I pulled over to the side of the building and parked at the curb. I had two car seats taking out the back seat and my husband in the passenger seat, so I took my daughter out of the car and set her up in the trunk so she could use the potty. I had just got her settled, and she was looking uncomfortable and covering her face and looking down. I looked behind me, and I see a woman walking up to me. It was summer at the time and very warm. She was wearing a jean skirt and a tank top and had a crossbody purse. She looked at my daughter and said, Don't be embarrassed, we all go through it, and laughed. She said she needed a ride to the freeway and asked if I could take her. I told her that I was sorry, but I couldn't. She started to seem bothered and asked why I couldn't take her. I said my back seat is full, so I don't have room for her. She snapped back. So you're telling me you put your daughter in the front seat? I told her, no, that was my husband was in the front seat. As soon as she heard that I wasn't alone and had my husband with me, She started slowly backing away and walking down the street she came from. As she was walking away, she said, Oh, I'm sorry. I used to be from here, but not anymore, and quickly walked off. If she would have made a left on the cross street she was walking towards when going towards my car, there was a restaurant and gas stations a block up. Plenty of people to ask for a ride. I'm... Still so grateful my husband was with me that day. I don't know what her true intentions were, but getting to a populated area didn't seem to be one of them. When the angels ascended from on high, they told us that we were mistaken. God didn't make us in his image. As they pulled out their knives, they informed us that he made us from his recipe book. The Family's Haunted Barn by Anonymous Hello, never posted here before, but I thought it would be fun to tell some spooky stories for the Halloween season. So, for some background... 
The barn has been my family for two generations. My grandparents and now my uncle. Someone did unalive themselves by hanging in the barn before they lived there. Female screams have been heard near the barn. I do not have many spooky stories. There are mostly my dad's as he grew up there. Plausible explanations at the bottom. One day, my dad was messing around with a football in the barn. He threw it into the loft only for it to come back to him in a perfect spiral. He threw the ball while yelling up to whoever was up there. No one answered, but the ball came back. He kept playing catch for around a minute until the ball didn't come back. He climbed the ladder and only saw hay. My dad was playing cops and robbers in the barn with his friends and they decided that the gutter was for the people who got caught. The gutter was a slightly lower part on the inside of the barn for manure. My dad was caught and was standing in the gutters when he saw a red light seeping up from the grates. He and his friends panicked and ran out. My dad was part of the tough crowd in high school. Halloween was coming up and they weren't scared of ghosts. They pulled together and brought a Ouija board. Of course, the barn was a perfect place to go. Someone had died there after all. They placed their hands on the planchette and watched in fear as it started to move. They freaked out, jumped away from the board, leaving it there as they raced back to the house. One friend swore the ghost had followed him home. The teen refused to sleep alone for weeks after. He slept between his parents. When he was 17, my dad was getting ready to move out and join the army. He had to get rid of his motorcycle as he didn't have a place to store it. He had found a buyer and was showing him the bike. It was kept in a small underground offshoot of the barn. As they were talking over, the old half-broken radio suddenly started blaring organ music. My dad was a rock lover, and he had never listened to anything else. The two guys were spooked and ran out as fast as they could. My dad checked out the radio the next day and saw the switch was in the opposition, still covered in dust. From the way the story is told, it seems like the radio could have also had a cassette player and he only listened to his tapes, which is why the organ music freaked him out so much. This is the only story that actually freaked him out and it's just because of the music. When I was little, my uncle had put up a rope in the middle of the barn, tying it to a rafter. All of us cousins had been born pretty close together, so leaping from a hayloft like Tarzan seemed to be a good way to keep all of us kids occupied. I ran to the barn, being everyone else. I grabbed the rope and clung to it with my hands and feet to cement my first place. Suddenly, small black things fell from above us. A few fell onto my head. After a moment of shock, we looked around us and saw dead bats. They layered the floor around us. Answers. For the first story, I don't know. Weird bouncing against the hay? Story number two about the weird glow. Probably some bacteria in a previously rainy day. Story number three about the Ouija board. Someone was playing pranks and one of the teens was a wuss. Number four about the radio. The radio was broken. It was probably also Mr. Crowley. I believe that's a rock song with organ music in it. Number five about the rope. Bats nest on the rope, pulled at it, probably loosened it, causing all the baby bats to fall and die. The nest just probably got stuck before it came down too. Answers for the women's screams have got to be cougars. And these stories, well, they add in the comments, so let me keep going. I love to pretend like the barn was haunted. My dad also doesn't believe in ghosts. We had fun coming up with reasonable explanations for scary stories. Well, reasonable to us. Everyone has spooky stories, though. Extra unrelated supernatural stories just for fun.
My mom is an avid believer of aliens. She has seen a few drones zip away at speeds greater than should be possible. I suspect the military is doing things. One strange time, though, she was in a plane with my sister. My sister has amphitasia, meaning she can't picture images in her mind. She is also, unrelatedly, extremely uncreative and no-nonsense. In the plane window, they saw a strange metal structure, almost like a power plant in the sky. Now, planes tend to fly above 20,000 feet above ground. So what was this strange structure? Asking my mom, and she says aliens. Ask my sister, and she just shrugs. My only explanation is that the clouds and light messed with their eyes, or they were closer to the ground than they thought. When I was 13, I was in this hotel. During my stay there, in every reflection, I saw bloody limbs. The mirror, the windows, the doorknob, the dresser handles, the paintings. They felt kind and like one being. There were so many of them and they wanted me to join them. I wanted to join them, but I couldn't figure out a way to rip my limbs off and die. I was probably just hallucinating. I see things that didn't exist like three times before, so I'm pretty sure I was just hallucinating sometimes, but those times aren't as interesting or spooky. I used to cross-country ski with my dad a lot in high school. One early day, it was snowing. We were the first ones on the trail. We were so excited to be the first ones to make tracks. We skied far out there. We usually would ski for up to four hours on weekends. We liked a distant race. About two-thirds through the route, we noticed the strange tracks. We knew they had just been made as the snow was fresh. The tracks looked almost like a deer, but bigger and with claws. The path torted along the ski trail for a bit before jumping back into the woods. Had we spooked it? I don't know. We couldn't figure out what had made the tracks, so I took a horrid photo. Phone cameras weren't as good and my phone was old. And showed it to my teacher who knew animals in the area. He thought it was a fake. I knew it couldn't be as we were the only ones out there. I think I've actually got a post about it. Well, I still don't know what it was. It could have been an animal far from home. Once when I was, I believe, 15 or 16, I had a strange and very long dream. This dream lasted years. It dropped out of high school, married my high school sweetheart. We had a beautiful child and a girl and a boy. Something happened and she died. It's been a while since I had this dream and dreams fade quickly, but I believe she died during our son's birth. I had no education and worked construction. It was tough being a single parent to my kids, but I loved them so, so much. My daughter was as brilliant as her mother. She got all A's and I knew she would be in college. I saved up what I could for them. I could tell there was something wrong with me though. My body wasn't working like it should. I came from a family of farmers and hunters and mechanics. We were built strong. I wasn't as strong as I used to be. I put off doctor's visits, though. I was a man, and men don't need help. One day, I slipped on a ladder and took a nasty fall. I had to go to the doctor. When I was there, they realized something was off. They ran some tests and came back to me, explaining that my muscles were atrophied. I had some sort of disease, and I wouldn't be able to work construction anymore. I watched my body wither away in front of me. My daughter, bound for greatness, took a gap year after high school to care for me and her little brother. My bills were stacking up. 
I couldn't work. I was bringing my family down. I was the man. I was supposed to be the provider. Their college savings were wasted on me. I was going to die anyways. Every hunter has a gun. I woke up with a grim determination. I knew I had to make the right choice. Well, some may think I was trapped in another world. I just think I was another weird dream, albeit a bit of a long one. This is getting long, so this is the last one. I went to Michu Picchu. We hiked up to a taller point for photos, but didn't enter the area yet. The next day, we entered, and I vomited all over the sacred land. The tour guide freaked out about it a bit. He also decided I had been sacrificed there. The first thing I remember watching as a child was a Michu Picchu dock, and ever since then, I've been obsessed. I know so many facts about it and always wanted to go. It just so happened that they were able to visit on the winter solstice, an extremely important day for Incan people. There is a special area the light shines through on only the winter and summer solstice, and my birthday. As soon as we exited the sacred grounds, my vomiting stopped and I was okay. Probably height sickness, forgot what it's called. As I will sometimes throw up when at heights. It was just weird as the day before we were even higher and I was fine. Home is where the heart is, they say. But I've got like 15 of them under my floorboards now, and I don't think the sound of them still beating or helping my anxiety like at all. A memory of when my home was broken into, but it wasn't correct. It was worse by the bear of wisdom okay recently i've been having troubles with kids knocking on my door and running i have severe ptsd so this was causing me some issues at home so i was in contact with a police officer in the area who my mother knew we met up at a coffee shop to discuss what i was to do to make myself feel safer this was going fine until my mother brought up an old story about when our house was broken into. My memory on this, waking up Christmas and only having one thing because everything else was taken. I was too young to really remember it, but I'm 35 and not one person has spoken to me about it since childhood. So I always thought my version was correct, except it really wasn't. What actually happened was, my mother woke up in the night having heard a noise. She knew there was a burglar in the area because my uncle next door had his Christmas presents stolen. This is where I had just confused myself. She got up in the dark and went next door to my room to pick me up. I was around two years old and was wide awake, just staring up in my cot wide-eyed. My mother flicked on the lights and I said something about a man. She freaked out and we were alone in the house and when she looked down, she saw a little patch of burned carpet and a spent match. They come in through downstairs, lit matches and just drop them still lit. While they were walking around, she could follow the entire trail from the back of the house to my room. Back to the present, I was staring at my mother in the coffee shop, coffee halfway to my face and she's like, what? I said, I do not recall this, I recall something else, told her quickly, and she was like, Oh, no, that was your uncle. We nearly died in a house fire. And I had a fucking existential crisis right there because I've been deathly afraid of fires all my life, to the point of night terrors as a little kid, with no explanation. Now, I get it. Fuck's sakes. Look, Mommy, a shooting star! Make a wish! 
the child exclaimed as her mother held her tightly, looking up into the night sky. As the asteroid entered the atmosphere, the mother closed her eyes and wished that this wasn't the end. Close Call by Improvement OK 3248 Decided to share a few more experiences in life. This one happened back in my first year of high school. You can't just move anyone into a neighborhood without a background check. I can't even recall how many times I've said this to people and how many times I've been told that's an old saying. I lived in a small town all my life and the only crimes you ever heard of was robberies of stores and houses. Murders, kidnappings, and big crimes of those types were extremely rare in the 2000s and going forward, but in the 90s, it was a different story. To get back on track. Even then, someone knew something. If you don't see or hear anyone around at that time, that didn't mean someone wasn't watching. Everyone knew each other, and if someone didn't know you, they knew most or all of your family members. But everyone, young and old in this small town, can and will agree on this. If someone is an outsider, everyone is on high alert. I've seen a few newcomers in our small town. I would hear a huge majority of people trying to figure out who they were and even telling my generation and below to be careful and watch our backs. And me and my sister did. We stayed at home and never left without our mom or stepdad in tow. They made sure of it. Some new people moved in across the street from our place. We didn't care since we stayed in the house 90% of the time unless it was to go handle business, groceries, and the like. As stated, no one knew these people, so quite a few people in our town were on high alert. And they were right to be. Back then, it was safe to go out at night and the older people could sit on their porches without worry. We went to the store for snacks and some frozen pizza to eat one night around 6 to 7 p.m. since no one felt like cooking. We were turning in. I always watch our surroundings and this night I was doing that too. I saw a man wearing dark blue jeans and a black shirt. I couldn't tell what material it was messing with our apartment door. I got my sister and mother off who were talking. Why is there a dude at our door? By then, my mother knows him too. Since we had the headlights on, no other lights of anyone else's apartment were on except for the building across the street. And even then, only the first floor, first apartment on the left if you're facing the building outside light was on. And... There was a man, leaning against the wall close to the breezeway, watching. Let's go ahead and get out while the man is right there, my mother said, grabbing her weapon as she told me and my sister to stay close to her. It was then that the guy started walking towards the middle of the road, looking anxious as he shoved his hands into his pants pocket. I tried to look at his face. He kept it turned away from us looking around the apartment complex as if he was looking for someone. We got to Complex C, Breezeway. That's when I saw the guy who was at our door hurrying from around the building to head back across the street. I didn't say anything until we got into the house. Turned out the guy watching was on lookout, and upon noticing our car returning, tried to warn his friend who was at our door. We locked up, made sure everything was still in place before my mom told me to barricade the door. We've been doing that for some time, but I'll admit I had some nights where I didn't because I was super tired or sore from gym class working out with weights and such. That night, I did it immediately, and the following few days, nothing happened. A week or so passed before the big thing occurred. Up until that night, I barricaded the door without question. I worked out, so I was sore all over. My mom was firm in making me barricade the door. My sister nor her wanted to do it. 
and my stepdad was at work, so it was up to me. I admit I lazed around till around 9.30, 10pm before doing it and heading to bed. The next morning, we did our normal routine and left to drop me off at school. My mom was locking the door, at least tried to. What the hell? I heard her say, making me turn around to see her struggling with a lock that was completely loose. She fumbles with it, trying to put the lock back into place. Nothing was working, and she was getting frustrated. It was clear someone took our deadbolt off, or at least tried to before giving up and trying to fix it to make it seem like nothing was wrong. She tried to fix it, gave up, and despite me telling her not to take me to school, she took me in anyway. We were all worried and anxious. I mean, our doorknob was loose. Anyone could walk in. But it was fixed to seem like nothing was actually wrong. Mom picked up my stepdad from work, told him what was going on, and the maintenance man came to fix the door later that day. Everyone's door was changed with new locks and even deadbolts. No one was happy, but the manager didn't care. On top of that, the gossipers were talking about a resident in Complex D had abruptly moved. We didn't find out until some days later. Someone reported about the woman having two guys living with her who were known criminals and not on her lease due to past arrests for break-ins. No one knew where she and the guys went, and they just truly up and left. Over dinner, while my sister washed dishes, my stepdad was talking about everything to a close friend who worked on the police force. After the call, he and my mom talked and he said, What if those guys were the ones trying to break in, and that's why the lock was broken? We all stayed silent. Me looking at my mom, who looked from me to my dad as we silently let the pieces fall into place. I felt dread in my bones. If I never forced myself to barricade the door that night and just went straight to bed, where would me, my sister, and mom be now? As we extracted a perfectly preserved Neanderthal head from the glacier, one researcher cut his hand on its teeth and suddenly passed out not breathing. While the team medic performed CPR, I stared in shock at the head's still moving jaw, only snapping out of it by the medic's screams as the researcher bit into her face. And with that, our time together is coming to an end. First of all, if you have a story you'd like me to narrate, you can send it my way three different ways. All of them are linked down below in the description box. Second of all, I'd like to thank my patrons and members. Thank you guys so much for your support. I truly appreciate it. Last but never least, I'd like to thank the writers who let me read their stories this evening. I thought it'd be interesting to have Halloween stories as well as everyday stories to remind you that creeps can be all year round. They don't just wait for Halloween. It doesn't matter the date. That creep is just going to be a creep. That stalker is just going to stalk you. And that guy is just going to break in whatever he wants. But I really enjoyed the Halloween story where I couldn't figure out where the scratching was and then it just turned out to be a Halloween decoration. Truly, some of my favorite stories are the ones that you think are so creepy until you're the one that was the creep or it was less creepy than you thought. A haunting and bizarre barn can give you those chills all year round, whether it's Halloween or just the middle of summer. You'll never know what you'll find in there, though it is sad that someone did end their life there. That is an actual pity. Now, if you enjoyed these stories, hit that like button and make sure it feels it. If you're new, please subscribe and turn that pretty little bell to all notifications so you don't miss a single upload. And of course, I would love a comment. 
What story did you like the most? What kind of stories would you like in the future? Or if you have a question for me. I absolutely love reading comments. If you're on the podcast and are able to, please leave a review. And Spotify also now allows comments as well. I got rid of the questions, now they have comments. And no matter where you're listening, if you know someone else who might enjoy these stories, please share it with them. It really helps new people find these stories and hear my voice. And I really appreciate it, guys. And if you'd like to help in a more financial way, I do have Patreon and memberships where you get early access and a few other bonuses. If you'd like to do a one-time thing for a tip or donation, I do have PayPal, Buy Me a Coffee, and Super Thanks on YouTube. As always, guys, none of this is ever expected. Always appreciated. I just really appreciate you guys coming and listening to my stories and my little narrations. Most of you already know that this is just my hobby. I do have a day job, and I just enjoy narrating and sharing stories. I've always enjoyed sharing stories, so it seems going online and narrating was just the next step in me sharing. So, thank you so much for watching and listening. It always has and always will mean the world to me. Also, just so you guys know, there's actually another video coming out today. You get two videos. Happy Halloween, guys. Sleep tight and don't let 42 bite or steal all your candy.